What's up Surfer Squad, Tanner here and I'm back with yet another terrarium build. About 18 months ago we made the Venus Flytrap terrarium which is a highly requested project. Since then I've received countless suggestions to do projects focused around other carnivorous plants. In this one I'll tackle the plant I've received the most requests for which is the sundew. In case you're not familiar with what a sundew is, I'll give a basic rundown. Drosera, or what we usually call sundew, are a really interesting carnivorous plant. One of the first things you'll notice is that they are covered in tiny hair-like structures known as trichomes. These have little sticky drops of a substance called mucilage, which attracts and captures unsuspecting insects. This plant also responds to stimuli and will wrap around ensnared prey items. Drosera will also secrete enzymes to break down captured prey and absorb nutrients from them. There are a lot of sundew to choose from, but for this one I'll be using Drosera tocaiensis. These are well suited for long term success in a terrarium. This plant will do best with bright lighting, high consistent humidity, and an appropriate substrate. Like the Venus flytraps, sundew receive their nutrients from eating insects. In addition to this, long term exposure to mineral rich soil will be harmful to the plant. Therefore, a substrate devoid of nutrients will be ideal for their longevity. That in mind, we'll mix up the same substrate from the Venus flytrap terrarium. This mix drains well, resists compaction, and stays moist without becoming soggy. It's composed of three items including dried sphagnum moss, peat moss or cocoa fiber, and quartz sand. When choosing these materials, it's extremely important to find ones that aren't enriched with nutrients. As stated, we want the substrate to be as absent of nutrients as possible. We'll combine roughly one part of peat moss, two parts of dried sphagnum moss, and one part of quartz sand. After everything is thoroughly mixed together, you should end up with something like this. It's pretty dry so distilled water was introduced. When adding water to the system, be sure to only use distilled, reverse osmosis, or rainwater. Anything else will add unwanted minerals. We're also going to need a suitable container. I've had this one sitting around for a while now and I knew it would be perfect for this build. It will retain the humidity well because the opening is small. Having an open top will also allow the plants to attract any pest insects that may end up in the house. That said the downside to having an open container is that I have to water it from time to time. Now then, let's set up the terrarium. Per usual we'll start with the false bottom. For this one I'm using black gravel for the drainage element as to not draw the eye away from the scape. I'm also using a piece of geotextile fabric for the barrier. It was cut out slightly larger than the diameter of the container. After that gravel was poured into the jar until it was about an inch deep. I evened it out with my trusty fan brush and topped it off with the fabric from earlier. If you want to learn more about this process and terrarium false bottoms, I'll link a helpful video up in the card. Next up is the substrate. It too was poured into the container. I used my fan brush to create a slope that's higher in the back. This is one of the easiest ways to create a good sense of depth. Just like the flytrap terrarium, I didn't include a charcoal layer. As I explained in that video, I suspect that charcoal will add unwanted nutrients to the system. Now it's time for the hardscape. I'll be using black lava rock for this one because it's inert. I have three different sizes for optimal variation among the stones. If you go with a single size, it's a lot harder to create something that looks natural. To properly place them within the container, I had to use my tweezers. In doing so I moved them around and redistributed the substrate until I got a look that I was pleased with. Of course that's easier said than done. I also added more substrate to improve the definition of the landscape. If you know me, then you know a terrarium really isn't complete without moss, and this one is no exception. Here I have sphagnum moss and liverwort. Both will help add great texture and ground coverage to the setup. I started by planting the sphagnum moss along the top of the slope. 
it will serve as the perfect background plant. That said, I'll have to make sure to keep it trimmed or else it will grow too tall. From there, I planted the liverwort in the foreground. It won't grow very tall and is well suited for this spot. Now we can finally add the sundew. I carefully removed them from the planters, dug a hole with the copper wire, and planted them accordingly. I wanted them near the front of the terrarium so they would be the primary focal point. I also decided to add a few accent plants including, of course, Grimminius minimus aureus, Saxifragia stolonephra, and Slaginella crausiana gold tips. All of these were removed from the planters and the existing substrate was removed. Afterward, they were dipped in distilled water to remove any excess debris. I also got a few cuttings of Fuggies Pumula quercifolia for additional ground coverage. Before planting, I split the acorus into smaller portions. I also moved the smaller sundew to a different location. From there, I proceeded to plant a few segments of acorus in the background. Then the strawberry begonia was planted just to the right of the rock formation. The remaining Acorus segments were added to the background. At this point I decided to add more ground coverage. So I got a pile of flame moss and chopped it up into smaller pieces for better distribution. With this I filled in the remainder of the foreground. Crevices between the rocks were also filled in with any excess. The fungus pumula were then added to the foreground. As always, these will add some great texture with their tiny leaves. Last, I added the slaginella. This is one that I'm really going to have to keep in check because it has the potential to grow out of control. Then onto the finishing touches, tiny pieces of lava rock. These are placed throughout to create additional textural contrast. To complete the process, I sprayed everything down with distilled water. I also wiped the exterior of the container with a microfiber cloth. There you have it, the completed sundew terrarium. All in all, I think it turned out pretty well. I kept it simple so that it would be easy to maintain and leave space for the sundew to grow. Most of the other plants I'll keep well trimmed since the focus of this terrarium is intended to be the sundew. My only real complaint at this time is that I wish I would have had more than two to start. 
I'm really excited to have finally made it though because I've had these plans for a few months now. In case you're wondering, this one will most likely require daily misting. It's also being kept under artificial lighting as I don't think it would get enough in front of the window. Anyway, I can't wait to see how it progresses and I really hope you enjoyed it. On that, I'll see you on the next one, Surpa Squad. Take care and peace.